Hey guys, welcome back. This is lesson two, getting set up in Ableton. So we've taken a first look at Ableton Live 9. And before we go any further, I just wanna make sure that everyone out there is set up properly within Ableton's preferences. Uh, a few uh, minor and often overlooked settings in here can make a world of difference in your Ableton experience. Um, so it's worth taking just a few minutes to go through some of these preference panes to make sure that uh, you don't get hung up later on. Um, so first things first, in order to get to Live's preferences, there's always a menu bar item available to you here. If you just click on the word Live up in the top left and then click on Preferences, that will open up the preference pane for Ableton Live. Uh, another quick key command, if you are into that, is Command Comma. Uh, and a little side note, in any Macintosh program, command comma will open up that program's preferences. Um, well, virtually any, just about 99% of all Mac programs. So anyway, we're in Ableton Live's preferences here. Um, and the first pane on the left here is gonna be look, feel. Um, now for most of you out there, I would say all of these default uh, parameters are gonna be just fine to leave the way they are. Um, a couple ones to pay attention to are auto assign clip colors. Um, I usually just leave that on so that uh, you, as you can see up here, these, these clip colors were automatically assigned. I'm gonna go back and change those to suit my liking later on anyway, so I don't really bother with that too much. Um, but if you're uh, a bit OCD um, and you really wanna go in here and uh, assign a specific color um, as your default clip color, uh, go ahead and do that. Just click this auto assign clip colors off and then just select your color of choice. I'm gonna leave that on. Um, another thing to pay attention to that drastically uh, alters or changes your Ableton experience uh, that I've heard from, from other Ableton users is, uh, is right here under uh, the skin preference. Um, so by default, it's going to say default. Um, if you're coming from Ableton Live 8, default 8 might look a little bit more familiar. Um, and of course, there are a few other options here. Um, Disco is going to give you a, you know, a nice uh, logic type look. Uh, Frost is going to give you a nice open airy type look. Um, most people gravitate towards uh, the default in my experience, um, but if it suits your liking, if it's gonna open up your creative mind more to go with uh, a different color scheme, feel free. Uh, so that's look feel. Um, I would leave all three of these uh, on as well. Um, now we're gonna jump into the audio preference pane, and this is one that you're probably gonna be spending the most amount of time in, um, in terms of the preference panes. Uh, hopefully not too much time, but uh, getting these audio preferences set up correctly is going to uh, make or break your Ableton experience. Um, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your driver type um, is set to, if you're on Mac, core audio. Um, if you're on a PC, uh, make sure that you have the drivers installed for your specific sound card. Um, or uh, you could also install the uh, Osseo driver, um, and that will interface between uh, your computer, your software, and a multitude of uh, hardware interfaces out there. Um, since I'm on Mac, Core Audio is pretty much the way to go. Um, I have my audio output device uh, set up as uh, the built-in output, although you notice that I have a bunch of other choices here. I have a USB sound device. I have a uh, uh, Meteor mics from Samson uh, audio out, and I also have the sound card, which I'm usually on. It's my, uh, it's my Fireface 800. Um, but for the purposes of uh, most of you out, out there, built-in output is gonna be the way to go. So that's gonna be your um, headphones output if you're on a MacBook Pro or MacBook Air. Um, it's gonna be the, uh, the eighth inch uh, output on the back of your iMac. Um, or on your Mac Pro. Um, if you have another sound card, just make sure that you have the drivers installed 
um, before you go and open up live and go to configure this preference right here. Uh, the next thing to do um, for right now, um, I'm gonna leave audio input device to no device since I'm not doing any audio input recording from an external audio source. That's gonna free up some CPU. Um, it's minor, but it does uh, count um, when you start stacking up a lot of tracks out here. Um, and the last thing I'm gonna do up in this top audio device panel area is check my output configuration and just make sure that this stereo one too, at the very least, is checked. Um, you'll notice that if I switch to something with more outputs, let's say the Fireface, and then hit output configuration, I have a lot more options here. Um, so depending on your sound card of choice, uh, make sure you jump into output configuration. Um, we'll get more into audio input device and setting up a input device and input configuration later on uh, in the series. But for now, let's just worry about getting sound out of Ableton. So the next thing to take into consideration is your sample rate. Uh, for 99% of you out there making music to be released, uh, to get your sound out there, 44.1 or 44,100 is going to be just fine by default. I would always leave default uh, sample rate and pitch conversion at high quality. Um, for those of you out there uh, composing music for film, television, or commercials, you're going to want to, in a lot of cases, uh, compose at 48 kilohertz. But even then, sometimes you're going to be want to be at 44.1. So I would leave it at 44.1 by default, unless you know you're going to need to deliver something at 48. Uh, 44 one is going to be just fine for most cases. Uh, the next thing to consider is going to be your buffer size. Now, the good rule of thumb when it comes to your buffer size is you're going to want to keep your buffer size as low as possible without getting any popping, clicking, or jittering, or um, any kind of distortion on the output signal uh, coming out of Ableton. So the easiest way to test that is to come down here to your test tone, your CPU usage simulator in particular, and go ahead and throw this up to 80%. This should, by default, look like this, 50%. Um, throw that up to 80%. Go ahead and hit that on. You'll notice that your CPU usage just jumped to 80% in Ableton up here. Now, I'm turning this up on my end so I can hear that really crisp and clear. What I'm listening for is any kind of popping, clicking, or distortion, any transients, anything but a pure, clean, warm tone coming out of the speakers. I don't hear anything, but I'm gonna jump it down to 32 just to be safe, jump it down to 16. Okay, you hear that? That popping, that clicking? That's what you're listening for. If you hear that, go ahead and jump your buffer size up and whoops let's go up to 128 wow 64 was giving me issues jump it back down to 64 so a good rule of thumb is keep bumping up that buffer size until you stop hearing those pops those clicks give it a little bit of time as well because you might hear one randomly um, I'm not hearing any now. And then go ahead and bump it up again at a uh, multiple of 64. So if you're at 64, go to 128. Um, if you're at 128, go to 256, 256 to 512, and so on and so forth. Um, a lot of sound cards won't give you the option to type in a random value like 68 or you know like 75. Um, most times it'll be locked in. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave mine at 64 because I'm not hearing any pop air clicking. And I'm gonna turn that off. Um, I'm not going to worry about my driver error compensation right now. Um, and, and that should be good to go for my audio preferences. As I build my session out, I might need to come back in here and up this value, say to 128, 128, <laughs> or 256, um, or even 512 or 1024 if um, my project needs uh, dictate that I need to kind of bump up my, my buffer size to compensate for all the processing that's going on in my session. For right now, I wanna go ahead and keep this number as low as possible. Uh, and a good rule of thumb for your output latency um, is if you can keep it under 10 milliseconds, you're doing pretty good. So under 10, doing pretty good. 
Uh, the lower the better, obviously, but don't compromise sound quality. Um, so there you go, that's latency, that's buffer size. Jumping into the MIDI sync tab, the only th real thing to be aware of right now is gonna be any keyboards you have plugged in directly through USB um, into a MIDI port, virtual MIDI port here in Ableton. Um, and I have an LPK25 as you can see, it's highlighted here in the list. I'm just gonna make sure that that's on for track because what that's gonna allow me to do is enable a MIDI track and get MIDI input from my external MIDI keyboard controller device. Okay, we're gonna get more into control surfaces, takeover modes, and sync and remote preferences later on in a uh, future lesson. But for right now, just make sure that if you have a MIDI keyboard plugged in to Ableton, that track is enabled so that you can get that uh, MIDI input when you record enable a MIDI track. Okay, jumping into file folder. Most of these settings are gonna be just fine as default, uh, as Ableton will have them installed. We're gonna get more into plugin sources and installing third-party VST plugins uh, and AUs, audio units, later on in a future lesson. For right now, go ahead and leave that default. Jumping into the library tab, uh, by default, Ableton should have all of this set up correctly. Uh, collect files and export always, um, and the installation folder for your packs and the location of your user library should be good to go by default. Uh, one thing to note is if you aren't migrating from Ableton Live 8, this, just like mine, will say not set. No need to worry there. That just means that you don't have a Live 8 library installed. Uh, and I wouldn't fret. Live 9 comes with a great library pre-installed. Um, so no worries there. Um, if you did migrate from Live 8, you will see a location here. And if you don't, then you can browse and find the location of your Live 8 library. Um, getting into one of the most important preference panes here, the record warp launch preference pane. So uh, some of these settings are, again, going to be some of those make or break settings that are going to drastically um, influence your Ableton experience overall um, in the course of time. So file type, you're going to want to leave that wave or put it to wave if it's an eighth. Uh, bit depth, put that on 32, uh, and you might be asking yourself, why not 16 or 24? Well, Ableton will do 32-bit floating point, internal routing, uh, recording, busing, and printing of audio, so you might as well uh, make use of it. Uh, disk space is very cheap, so if Ableton can do it, you might as well do it. Um, that will allow a much higher number of uh levels at which your digital audio signal can be recorded. So go ahead and leave that at 32. One bar counting is fine by me. Um, that just means I'm gonna get a, uh, and then I'm gonna start recording. That's long enough for me to get my bearings, um, but short enough that I'm not just sitting there waiting for two bars or four bars before I start recording when I arm a track to record. Um, exclusive, you're gonna wanna leave that arm and solo exclusive. All that means is that when I have a track, let's say this track right here, record um, armed, if I click another one, it will exclusively take over and unarm the previous track. Uh, same thing goes for solo. If I click any track and then click another track, it will unsolo the previously solo track and jump the solo to the new track. I can always hold down command um, when I uh, want to arm or solo multiple tracks at a time. So um, not really a big deal to keep this exclusively armed and exclusively soloed here. Uh, the rest of these look great. I always like to start transport with record. Um, warp and fades. This is an extremely important area and your preferences should look to start at least in Ableton, exactly like mine. So loop warp short samples, let's go ahead and leave that set to auto. Auto warp long samples, we're gonna leave that off. Um, if it's set on, click it off. Default warp mode, definitely gonna start that as beats. Uh, and create fades on clip edges, please leave this off, okay? And we're definitely gonna get into why these settings are the way they are uh, to start with. 
um, and the different warp modes within Ableton in a later lesson. But for right now, uh, just take my word for it and set it up like this. Um, down here in the launch area, this all looks good. Uh, and I just, uh, I like to leave off, start recording on scene launch. We'll get into that in a future lesson coming up very soon. The last two preference panes to wrap this up quickly are gonna be CPU, which you're gonna to wanna to leave multi-core, multi-processor support on. Always, that's gonna help with the processing in real time in Ableton, and especially with your renders, your bounce down to two tracks. Um, they're gonna be better quality and they're gonna happen faster if you leave that enabled. Um, the last preference pane is gonna be licenses and maintenance. And uh, in just about every case, you're gonna to wanna to leave Git software updates on. Um, that's one less thing you have to worry about down here. Whether you want to send usage data or not is entirely up to you. If you want to help Ableton out, if you want to send bug reports or crash reports um, or just usage data overall to help improve uh, the programming and future releases, go ahead and switch that on. Um, and if you don't, leave it off. So that about wraps up uh, a look at getting set up in Ableton Live 9 via the preferences pane, the preferences window. Uh, a little bit dry, a little bit tedious, I know, but thanks for sticking with me. Um, you'll be thanking yourself that you did later on when some of these seemingly small preferences pay off in huge dividends later on in terms of the time you save and your workflow overall. So thanks for sticking with us for lesson two, getting set up in Ableton Live. Coming at you in lesson three, we've got some audio and MIDI. See you then, guys.